Hello and welcome to the Ellen Road Roundup with me, Rob Mulholland. It's my weekly look back at all the events surrounding Leeds United. And this week began with moaning lump of sentient bacon Kasper Schmeichel once again having a little whine about how he was treated by Leeds fans. Using an interview in an ITV documentary, I know, an ITV documentary, it's like having home bargains caviar, to complain that the chant of, your dad's a but you're alright, wasn't very welcoming. And oh my god, I'm so sorry, Casper. I didn't realise you were such a humorless little twat. What a wet little fanny he is. He's exactly the sort of kid who, when you do a your mum joke, goes, uh, no, actually, my mum didn't suck you off. She never, uh, you're lying. Like, how does he not understand what a football rivalry is? The only reason we sing that his dad's a cunt is because he played very well for that team that we fucking hate. That's a fella. He seems perfectly all right. The great irony of it is, of course, is that in the later years that we've learned the dad's all right, the son's the cunt. The children of famous people are nearly always wretched little fucking rats. And it turns out Casper the humorless ghost is no exception. Anyway, now that he's explained himself to the Leeds fans, I'm sure that'll be the last time we ever mention it and it definitely won't come up again when we play Leicester next time. Next came the news that despite us having fewer players than the Serbian film The VR Experience, teenage right back Cody Drama was being allowed to go out on loan to Cardiff City. Now at first this seemed like a very baffling move and the only justification I could think of was that it was even more of a way to flex on Arsenal, like look how fucking few players we need to play a game Arsenal you little bitches. We're gonna give one of ours away and still fucking get a fixture on, what of it? But then it later transpired that Cody himself had pushed for the move because apparently he had a lifelong dream of getting relegated under Steve Morrison. Can you imagine a bigger downgrade than going from Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds United to Steve Morrison's Cardiff City? I bet Cody Drama would be like, no thanks Beyonce love, pop your knickers back on, I'm off to wank off a tramp round the back of BNM. He'd be better off playing in a Morrison's car park. As a low level professional comedian, I can fully relate to having an idiot agent who wants you to do stupid shit, but Cody, you've got to tell him to shut up sometimes. In his pre-match press conference before the West Ham game, Bielsa's comments on the situation were dripping with more sauce than Gravy Lee's chips, saying, Perhaps I overvalue the fact that you're in a 20-man squad in the best league in the world. Which, if it was a Facebook status, would have all the Prosecco mums out in force commenting snake emojis going... <laughs> DM me, hon. You're okay, babes. It's not worth it. You deserve better. Now, obviously, young players have to prioritise their own development. They only get one career, it's a short one, and there's not a lot of loyalty in the football industry. And if Cody believes that Steve Morrison, who is, lest we forget, one of the worst footballers I have ever seen play football for Leeds United, is the man to facilitate that, rather than one of the world's greatest ever managers who has a long-standing track record of developing players to be the best that they can be, well, good luck to you, Cody. Off your fuck, mate. Cardiff, though. Steve Morrison. I saw him hit the corner flag with a shot. Why would you want him training you? Shit, and it's Cardiff's horrible. The crap. There was better news to follow as the shambling reanimated corpse of Adam Forshaw was given another contract extension. It's hard to argue that there is anyone on earth who deserves it more than that man. Congratulations to him. His determination to fight back from endless setbacks continues to be a massive inspiration and I'm really glad to see him fully fit and back to playing the best he can possibly do. Now that he's got the contract situation sorted, he can put his history of injuries behind him and really start to kick on and get a consistent run in the team. For sure foreshadowing. Also this week, teenage starlet Max Dean, whose name sounds like he should be starring in old Hollywood movies, like smoking in a leather jacket on the cover rather than banging in worldies for the under 23s, scored a worldie for the youth team. And it was a sight for sore eyes considering the fact that he is now the oldest available striker for Leeds United. He topped it off with a darts themed celebration and I've actually managed to get the audio from the pitch side mic for this so we can hear what he was saying. Who's in charge? Me or the devil? Come on, you can't. By the way, do me a little favour, will you? Uh, next time you're watching the match with your mates, just tell them about this show or maybe pop it in the group chat. Help spread it around a little bit. It'd really help me out. Now, press that like button. Go on. 
Mm. And so to Sunday and a return trip to West Ham's Hyper Enorma Mega Globo Olimpo Bowl. To play the high flying side managed by David Moyes, pictured here watching Indiana Jones open the Ark of the Covenant. After last week's relatively limp loss to them in the cup, we were looking to avenge ourselves and really stick it to Derby Bottlers Arsenal by picking a bench more youthful than the Pepper Pig fan club and just bloody getting on with it. That attitude is one of the reasons why Bielsa is so very loved in Yorkshire. It just really fits with who we are as a people. Just bloody get on with it and stop mithering, you bloody soft southern apiths. We went into this match with only 11 fit players available, but luckily two of them, Robin Cock and Pascal Stroik, were very fit indeed. Ooh, hotties. Look at this pair of mustachioed banditos, and sincere apologies if you've just moistened your seat whilst you were watching that. Those 11 that we had started the game in fantastic fashion. We got hold of the match right from the off, and the midfield combination of Forshaw, Cock and Click in the middle was beautiful. Robin Cock has the classic good feet for a big man, and some of his nimble footwork and delicate passing was a real joy to behold. And the fact that he can throw his big 6 foot 4 frame around our midfield doesn't exactly help in our tiny, tiny team of leprechauns. We got our reward for our early dominance when Jack Harrison smashed in Adam Forshaw's layoff to put us into a deserved early lead. And at this point, we looked as good as we have in fucking ages. West Ham simply could not handle us. Birds returned to the trees. Dolphins swum in the canal. All was right with the world again for 20 whole fucking minutes. Because on the 20 minute mark, two of our players, Junior Furpo and Adam Forshaw, both hobbled off clutching their hamstrings. Hello darkness, my old friend. Seeing Adam Forshaw injured again was fucking heartbreaking. It was like watching a Vietnam flashback. Just give him my hamstring, goddammit! But after the match, he claimed it was only a minor injury and he'd be back very soon, hopefully for the next game. But coming from him, it felt a bit like my dad telling me that this time he actually was just nipping out to the shops. So we were forced into a pair of changes and being as our bench was all teenagers plus a half-crocked Rodrigo, we brought on a couple of the teenagers in Leo Yelder and Lewis Bate. And fuck me, weren't they both? Both excellent. On their Premier League debuts, away at West Ham, who were a very good team, and they look like they've been at it for years. Yelda is, by my estimate, our sixth choice centre back, and him being so fucking good really shows that we do have depth in this team when everyone doesn't get crocked at the same time, and only in certain positions. Lewis Bate, I'm sure, will be gutted to be subbed off in the second half, but it was purely a tactical switch. It was just one of those things that Bielsa does, and he definitely shouldn't take it personally. We can point to footage of it happening to Calvin Phillips a few times to make him feel a little better if he is concerned about it. But don't worry, lad. You played very well. Looking forward to seeing a lot more of you. Bright, bright futures. I'll be honest, at this point, my mood fell to damn near terminal. And when Jarrod Bowen, a player only signed by West Ham because his head is the exact same shape as their badge, equalised following some typically accommodating defending from us at a corner, I started to fear the worst. But then the darndest thing happened. We whipped in a corner and and somehow it got through to the somehow onside Jack Harrison and he just sort of dry humped it into the net. It was such a bizarre goal that I just didn't really celebrate it at the time. I just didn't really compute that it had fucking happened. And it looked like it was definitely going to get disallowed. It was only when VAR confirmed that actually, no, it was fine. It was a perfectly good goal that I finally allowed myself to believe. Leeds United have scored. From a corner. I bet David Moyes was fucking gutted about that, you know. Like, I bet he was fucking fuming. Because, you know, they spend, like, hours every day working on corners. And it looks like we just spend, like, five minutes before we pack up on Friday afternoon. <laughs> just a little reminder. Patreon.com forward slash Rob Mulholland. One pound a month. Go on. You know you want to. At half time, things were looking good, if a little fragile. Like an early noughties Kate Moss. So it wasn't a huge shock when... Budget David Silver lookalike Pablo Fornals equalised. A David Bronzer, if you will. But that was to be far from the end of this frankly batshit game. And as the action intensified, it raised my heart rate to a level it hasn't been at since a beef of 16. And by the way, I watched this game with COVID. And even though it's that mild new Omicron diet COVID, I could have still done with this being a little bit less of a barnstormer. At the end of the match, I was wheezing like Steve Evans after a flight of three stairs. First, Rafinha played a pass so goddamn perfect, all he could do himself was stand and watch in awe. It was like a high-grade El Hadj Juf to Ross McCormack against Spurs in the cup, except, you know, 
He did it because it was a perfect pass, not because he couldn't be arsed running after it. And Jackie finished his hat-trick with a gorgeous little chip. This goal was so pretty that if there was a way that I could physically fuck it, I absolutely would. And like, gentle, loving, slow and smooth, I'd really take my time. And two minutes later, Rafinha spanked the bar like it had been a naughty little slut that needed punishing. <laughs> I need to calm the fuck down. Then, in the 73rd minute, after another gorgeous build-up, Click smashed in the finish to give us a little breathing space so I could finally enjoy the last 10 minutes without needing a fucking ventilator. Except, no, the ball struck Rodrigo on the line who was busy moaning to Rafinha that he didn't receive a pass, and VAR disallowed it because he was offside. And this is one of those where, look, I'm sure that is the letter of the law, I'm sure that's technically correct, but... Fucking come on, give us a break. It didn't change the outcome of what was happening at all. The ball was going in, it hit him, it went in anyway. And Gerard Bowen was interfering with play a lot more than that last week, I'll fucking tell you that. I know Bielsa doesn't complain about referees after the game, it's one of his principles, but fuck me, he definitely does during. He reacted to this decision like an Argentine Larry David. Muy, muy bueno. Muy bueno. Towards the end of the game, West Ham brought on a teenager of their own called Sonny Perkins, which is exactly what a cockney teenage footballer would be called in an American film made about this game. But it was to be their man of the moment, J-Rod, who was to have the final word. Because as the game played out in this awful limbo where I knew f as a certain fact in the core of my soul that Leeds were going to concede a goal, and in the final throws of the match, we fucking should have done. Antonio whipped in a cross, it deflected off Stuart Dallas's boot, and in that moment that it hung in the air, flying past Melier and towards Bowen, my ass fell clean through the fucking floor. But then it dropped to him so perfectly, rather than taking the easy header into the back of the net, the N4 man of the moment should get an England call up J Rod Bowen decided instead to do a sort of salmon leap towards the ball and chest it over the bar. And after his little moment shushing the Leeds fans after in the match, it was nom 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 muy delicioso. It was more delicious than a steaming hot bowl of Mama Schmeichel's pussy. Mmm. Yum yum. This win was nothing short of miraculous and it was one of those that makes you truly proud of this amazing team that we support. There are loads of players all over the pitch who deserve special credit. I can't name them all, I'd just name the whole team. They did fucking fantastically. But I do want to give a special mention to Pascal Stroik, who came back from his injury and hit the ground running like he'd never been away at all. He put in the sort of performance that'll have Mikhail Antonio looking under his bed to check that there isn't a mustachioed musketeer underneath it before he can go to sleep at night. In the aftermath of the game, old Moisery Guts had the fucking brass neck to complain about fixture scheduling, because... His team had had to play an extra game over Leeds in the week. Read the fucking room, David. When you're playing a team whose whole bench is made up of players whose mums had to sign permission slips so that they could go to London, maybe don't complain about your team getting stretched, eh, David? Makes you look like a tit, eh, David? Shut the fuck up, eh, David? And seconds before I started filming this video, it was revealed that Leeds United have tabled a formal offer for Red Bull Salzburg's player... What's his name? Brendan Aronson, who's American, so I assume it's Aronson. And you know, never fucking heard of him. But I've just banged his name into YouTube, watched some of his highlights, and I am now convinced he's the greatest player of all time, and if we don't sign him, I will fucking kill myself. Uh, if you want to know what to watch next, why not make it this video where I call Ryan Giggs a titterload on my comedy channel. Thank you very much to my Patreons for supporting me. You mean the world to me. Why not join him for as little as a quid a month? <laughs> Go on. I'll see you next time. Marching on together.